continue talking about the social self, but now let's focus on self discrepancy theory. I think you're going to identify with this pretty well. It's really very interesting. Let's talk about how self discrepancies can influence your self esteem. Think about your actual self. Your actual self is your self concept. It's how you perceive how you are. Now compare that with your ought self. Your ought self is essentially the self that would exist if you were to meet all of your responsibilities and obligations. It's essentially who you believe you should be. And now compare that with your ideal self. Your ideal self is essentially who you would like to be. Now my whole point here is that discrepancies between your actual self and your ought self and your actual self and your ideal self to some extent will predict your level of self-esteem. Let's go through a little example. We'll keep it simple. This will help you understand what I'm saying. Assume that this is how you feel about yourself. You believe that you're intelligent, which is a good thing, um, but you realize that you procrastinate and that that procrastination sometimes leads to some problems in your life. So for example, another way that you see yourself is that financially you're struggling. Now let's compare that with your ought self. And here we're talking about essentially who you believe you should be. Now you believe that you should be intelligent and you do perceive yourself as intelligent. So there's no discrepancy there and you're feeling pretty good about that. But you also believe that you ought to be the type of person who gets things done. You shouldn't be procrastinating. So there's a discrepancy there. And you probably believe that if you were more of a get her done type of person, you probably financially would be independent because that's how you believe you ought to be. You should be financially independent. Now, if there are discrepancies between the actual and the ought self, that's going to lead to feelings of guilt, sometimes feelings of shame or resentment. It could lead to feelings of anxiety. And of course, if you're feeling those types of things, you're likely to have lower self-esteem. Now, let's compare the actual self with the ideal self. Let's say ideally. Remember, now we're talking about the person who you really want to be. You believe that you should be intelligent and, and you are intelligent. Again, that's a good thing. Remember, it's not like self discrepancies are all or none. There's going to be a mix of things that work and a mix of things that aren't working so well for you. And ideally, you think that you should be relatively easygoing. You don't necessarily need to worry so much about procrastination. You're going to get things done when they need to get done. What's the big hurry? And also, when we're talking about that ideal self, ideally, you would love to be financially very generous where you, know, you have enough for yourself, but you also have enough for other people. But now remember, that's not who you are right now. Actually, you've got some problems with procrastination and financially you're struggling. Well, those discrepancies between your actual self and your ideal self, they're going to lead to some relatively negative feelings as well, like disappointment. You know, you're not becoming the person who you really want to be. Frustration, and it can even lead, of course, to depression. Now, if you're feeling those relatively negative things, you're probably going to have some relatively low self-esteem as well. So it's really kind of interesting that if we partial out how we see ourselves actually, how we ought to be, and ideally how we see ourselves, that can really predict pretty well, if there are discrepancies, how we feel about our own sense of self-worth, which is what our self-esteem is all about. All right, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon.